Do you remember this desktop synthesizer from Austria, this mighty Maya MD900? There's now also a little one. And you see it's a little desktop version with less con lesser controls or fewer controls, but with the same mighty engine. I'm here now with Horst. Hi, Dom. Nice to meet you. Uh, it's nice always that you come uh, to us and we can uh, present some new things as well. And it's always crazy and uh, lovely and uh, funny for the people when we are both talking in English. So uh, the most thing is understandable, I hope, for, and thank you uh, here. So um, you did an, a new version of your MD900, right? The official name of this is Vibes. Right, right. so we have changed the naming convention from this typical industrial naming MD, X, uh, Y, whatever, uh, to a, a name what we think it's that. So it's wipes, uh, is, I think fits very well to that what the device is and uh, it makes uh, a lot of fun to work on it. And the idea was uh, just that this, the first look is the MD900 engine isn't there. So we have a complete uh, compatibility between uh, this device in the in context of presets, arrangements, clip launching, everything. So, everything. so we have just taken the red pencil on the panel, but we have increased the operation with these nice LED encoders because the LED encoders give us the possibility to share different functionalities and parameters uh, uh, with the same knob. So, but you always be assisted about the colors because you know, as I remember, the MD900 has four parts uh, that can play four time press uh, in parallel. So the same thing is, in, is up here. So we're changing the colors here on the uh, main screen as well on the uh, encoder uh, colors. So yeah, every time you know where, where, where they are. So the difference uh, is uh, just not here because the operation is the same we did on the MD900. So that means you can everything uh, reach on the touch in, in, in the way you can, can change the, the, the views where you are and what, what you like. So on the other side, we have get quick navigations because we have on the panel also quick navigations on the MD900. And we, here we have uh, the concept of you pressing the function and the second press uh, gives you the instance of the oscillators and you can see on the LEDs how many choices you have. So, and there is for the quick using. Um, so for the first starting of people that are not so common with the knobs and, and buttons, they can just use the, the, the navigation uh, plane of the voice architecture. They can see what's the voice are rooted in, in mainly. I uh, can also hit the matrix and can you get in everything directly from the touch. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you can also select with, with data wheel, so you have different kind of operations and you can do it what you prefer. This device is more related to getting into some live performance things or jamming uh, uh, capabilities because the other big brother is the MD900 more related to doing sound design, to have every knob directly under control, every parameter more or less. And this is the, the idea. And we have, uh, it's not finalized uh, uh, at all because it is really finished short before the fair. So it was uh, uh, a huge work. We have overcome the part crisis to doing some changes in, in, in the design. Mm -hmm. And um, we have here a lot of capability for the future expansion as well inside. Uh, and we have uh, as well uh, spanned uh, the professional outputs with TSR connector with 6.3 millimeter stereo outputs uh, with uh, mono, stereo, uh, mono or stereo TSR connectors, headphone, as well uh, audio input, and we have thin, MIDI in and out, and we have expression and sustain pedal. F three mm -hmm. USB hosts, and as well um, um, Ethernet uh, connection, and this Ethernet connection has power of Ethernet, where we are working on an audio interface for eight channels, 24 bits and 48 kilohertz for doing the output separately. And you said no USB for USB audio and so on. So you're right. avoiding this. Right. So the reason is uh, uh, 
USB is common. I'm, I'm sure I like USB in case of that's the reason why we have a host uh, uh, connection, not the on the go connection, because I have the major problem with the ground loop. So USB is always the time. You, the device is floating, they have a floating ground. There's no ground connection. The ground connection comes at least over the mixing console. Mm -hmm. It's grounded. So, and when you have a USB connection to your notebook or PC, and there you have an additional uh, connection to your mixer, then you have a big ground loop and you have a lot of digital noise in there. And then it not, meets not the quality requirements that fits for me personally. And this is the reason why we don't do that. So the nature of Ethernet is more power. We can tunnel everything. We can do it as well in the future. Uh, Tante or IC67 uh, audio streaming capabilities. And we have a galvanic isolation. And uh, we think uh, as well for the uh, IREC guys to having a CV-based audio interface uh, with DC coupled uh, things. And we can give the power, and we do the same thing. So it's isolated, and the ground connection comes over the CV connections. Okay. And then we avoid every time ground loops between all the devices, and that is for the real uh, uh, setup an uh, important uh, uh, ideology. And we have learned this in the past, and you, a lot of users maybe have the same experience than I. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, it's the same MD900 just in, in small. You're right. That is exactly. This is an important message because it's not of use that the smaller device uh, from the same manufacturer has the same uh, engine inside. Mm -hmm. Because what we're seeing is that the real uh, heavy parts, so the, the, the motivation, I bring it on the point, is the MD900 is not so recognized as it what it is. So you see the knobs. Uh, it's a nice build, so that is recognized by the people. But always the price is a little bit a hurdle. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of functionality inside. So the first thing is we have more to bring the user uh, uh, on, 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 the, on the right level, what the device are with all these capabilities, and then they have to compare the price. So this was one thing. But on the other side, we could absolutely understand that people, uh, money, uh, crisis, we have all the same, same issues here. We go one step in the direction of our customer and say, okay, uh, the most people think is a nice machine, but it's not uh, my price range. And this, we try to bring it below 2,000 uh, mm -hmm. euros, so market uh, street price. But it is not of official so more, so this mm -hmm. is just an orientation because we're doing the calculation and we, we have also to, to, to negotiate with this, our sales and so on. But it is uh, that what we really try, uh, and that was the reason why we've built this device. Can we hear it yeah, again? Sure. So, uh, first, uh, let, let me introduce a little bit. It's not just a new hardware. So we have uh, as well expanded a new OS version, and this is running in both devices now. So the MD900 has get the new version, the version 2.20, and this has a lot of new features. And I give you a little bit uh, uh, a taste uh, what we we can do for that. So. Uh, the first is we have the noise oscillator that are just single uh, uh, waves uh, for noise and for ambient sounds and drone sounds. We have uh, spanned a multi-sample engine in there, so this is not a multi-sample mode. It's just when we take a look on that, just a small uh, uh, thing here is a third oscillator, you know, from the, it's the same on the MD900, and we have here multi-sample. So when I play... But this is one, one thing, so I give you now a little bit um, that what uh, brings that on the point, what is the difference. I just do a very classical thing like um, at CS80 sound, doing with face distortion on the one oscillator. <laughs> like to show here is uh, what's the, the advantage of that. So when we uh, just hit one key, then we get just one voice allocated. So that means we're using our dual structure in the synth. So we're doing with the oscillator, the classical subtractive mm -hmm. style, wavetable, whatever, spectral morph uh, algorithms oscillator. 
And on the other side, we use the noise oscillator as a multi-sample oscillator and feed it to the second track of the second pair of filter and amp. And remember, it's all in stereo from the beginning from the oscillators. So this is the wideness and, 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 and the smooth sounding. So, but it can be between smooth analog sounding and really harsh digital, you can do everything. So that is so a, a wide spectrum. And the point is we're doing quasi a layering in the voice. So, okay. and this sounds brilliant, and now we can do these things, like have a cool piano or uh, have a cool, cool choir. You cannot do that with subtractive synthesis. <laughs> or that can be more... Um, So this is more classical, like bad sounding. It's smooth, this was the past. And now <laughs> we get to the new kind of sounds because the next uh, thing is we have implemented the shaper now. So the shaper was missing out in the first implementation. So that is changed with the new S. The shaper consists of um, different kind of shaping uh, curves, including a sign, uh, including a bit crusher. And that can be uh, inserted in different uh, 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 things. So I can insert the, the uh, filter here, and I can insert it on oscillator one, oscillator two, or in the mix. So you can explore more, more, more monic rich and more complex right. stuff. Yes, so complex stuff because in the first attempt I was not sure that's a good idea to uh, to have after this complex oscillator stuff with spectrum morphing a shaper uh, behind. But I was so surprised by myself what is coming out. And I give you just uh, here uh, uh, maybe then a chance, uh, uh, a change to the MD900 because uh, uh, this is, is, is prepared with, with, with the sounds. Okay. But uh, uh, one, one thing, so I get, get just uh, some, some, some taste what the new behavior are doing. And um, so I like to... Yeah, so the first is uh, that we can So this is a more the, the digital nature and uh, as well for nice sounding things like uh, so plucky sounds that that brings us to the new delay with a feedback uh, in the feedback at a high pass and a low pass we use a effect section you remember as well uh, that we use on every part your own effect stack and there you can insert some effects the classical stereo delay uh, ping pong uh, uh, kind of it with this uh, uh, feedback filters in there, a reverb. Uh, then we can use um, as well some parametric equalizers, uh, some uh, mode delay like flanger chorus and so on, a tube amp simulation, and uh, the dynamic compressor as well with choosing a side chain and a phaser. The phaser is new. As well on the filter, we have uh, spanned. Um, a new model that is the Cork uh, uh, 35 low pass. That it was the first recreation of the filter that using the first generation of MS uh, MS20. Mm -hmm. And this model is done by from the paper from Stanford, and uh, we have tried to implement it in a in a good way. So for sure, sounds brilliant. But uh, honestly, analog is analog in that case. Yeah. But we are reaching this on the. In a, in a good way. So, um, uh, but nevertheless, it was the, the one thing that we have expanded matrix. The matrix uh, now has a new uh, a column. The column uh, gives you the capability you change between uh, unipolar or bipolar modulation. So this is important because envelopes are unipolar, mm -hmm. LFOs bipolar, and the behavior work was complete unclear what happens. So new sources, you nodes randomizing and, and stuff uh, like that uh, as well inside it. So this was 
the major thing on the filter, we have uh, as well implemented a linear and exponential function. That means that the envelope is heating exponentially. Mm -hmm. Or linear, that was before, so it's more snappy. Okay. On the envelopes, uh, we have improved um, the timing so that uh, we have now uh, a half millisecond, so 500 microseconds, the shortest attack decay okay. and release. And we have a uh, span to doing a AD loop. Okay. And in the other way, we have ex expanded the LFOs. So that means when we are just going to the LFOs, we have here a user uh, capability. So we have different wave shapes uh, extended. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the most thing is that we can paint oh. uh, with your fingers uh, like a step LFO, and then you can, can smooth it uh, afterward. And then you can create cool catering effects that is syn synchronizable with the mm -hmm. beat clock in, in some, some ways. Uh, and what's the important thing that have, well, then we have to, to, to change uh, shortly on the MV900. Uh, uh, but one thing, maybe that you believe me, that what you hear here is, is uh, really the same thing. So I just start a clip launching project. So, and we take a listen. So this is the clip launching is as well inside. So with the host, you just connect as well some controller mm -hmm. uh, like APC Mini or any, anything. Uh, this thing is getting better and better and better. Um, when we can expect this uh, first this update? Uh, the update we are starting uh, to doing this after the fair. So this is uh, mostly finalizing is some some testing and we change may may maybe some some small features that we get in. Uh, the last was the APC Mini uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mark II implementation, and that have to run to the test. And then I think two, three weeks, uh, it's online. And, la and the new unit? The, the new mic? unit, we try to bring it out before Christmas this year. Uh, we cannot say that the real amount, what we have, so maybe when some people have interesting, then should be quick. Uh, that is so the, the, the plan, and I think we can hold because we have all the supply chain and, and things for a certain amount prepared, so should work. Okay, thank you, Horst. Uh, thank you. All the time, you're welcome. Thank you. For thank that. you.